Yeah. Our next guest is breaking barriers in the sports world and said sporting event. This Sunday, Catherine Legg will compete in this year's Indy 500. She is the only woman competing in this year's race and only one of one of only nine oh, female my. drivers ever to compete in what is known as the greatest spectacle in sports. Whew. Yeah. Look, I mean, who, look who's let joining us now. Settle in for a second. Joining us this morning. Catherine joins us live this morning. Hello, welcome to New York Living. Congratulations. We bow down. Oh, thank you. Well, welcome. That's lovely. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, congratulations on qualifying. What is going on in your head as you compete on this level? Um, I think I get asked that a lot and um, you kind of work your way up through the stages. So it's not like you all of a sudden decide that you're going to wake up one morning and be an right. Indian car driver. <laughs> so um, I, I just do my job at the end of the day, just like you just guys do your job. job. Sure. You, you know what you're doing. You work your way through all the stages. Um, you just get it in your head what you have to do and you basically go to work i mean okay it's a really cool job don't get me wrong. <laughs> but um at the Admittedly. end of the day you know you just you work through everything that the engineers and and your crew guys have told you and i'm really lucky that the hendrix and honda crew are you know some of the best in the business so sure um i have good support i have great teammates and i and just do my job just do my job i'm mean, a very cool just job just keep turning ever so slightly left left <laughs> left left uh, uh. In my okay. former life, I used to cover, cover the Indy 500, and I was there for Danica Patrick's first first race. Have you had a chance to speak to any of your predecessors or other women um, who have raced in the Indy 500? I mean, I've raced in the Indy 500 twice before as well, just not for a decade because I've been busy uh, uh. doing sports car racing. I haven't been sat on my couch. So I've been, uh. been racing. Uh. She's been um, out here on those streets. On those streets. But yeah, we pretty much, we're, I mean, we're such an an anomaly that uh, we do tend to stick together. You know, I know Janet Guthrie very well. She was pretty much the first. And then obviously then St. James, Sarah Fisher. Sarah Fisher's a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, and then Danica and Simona and myself, I think, are, are the kind of the major ones. And yeah, we, we do tend to uh, we do tend to have a little club of our own because uh, we're a little bit outclassed to the rest of them, but not really. I mean, we've all been racing for so long now, I think that we're part of the furniture. So within the sport and within like our, our teams and, and IndyCar itself, I think they just see us as, as race car drivers. Good. It's Amazing. really amazing. As well they should. Media. I love as to well hear that. Should. Exactly. Anyone messes with you, the two of us, yeah, we'll, we'll head we'll down there real them. fast. I mean, and you've, you've more than earned it, so good. Yeah. Uh, but we understand that you got into uh, a, a crash a little earlier this week during practice. Yeah. I'm sure that's par for the course, but, but how are you doing? How are you feeling? I'm doing great, thanks. Obviously, um, all of our thoughts here are with Steph, who is in hospital. He's got a broken vertebrae, unfortunately. Oh. But um, I was very fortunate and, and walked away. And yeah, I think um, it just reiterates that healthy respect for the danger in the sport that, that is inherent, you know? Yeah. And unfortunately, it does happen, and we just hope that, that nobody does get hurt. Sure. So uh, you mentioned earlier at the top of the top of the interview, you said it's not like you just woke up this morning and said, you know what, today would be a good day to go <laughs> compete in the Indy 500. Can you can you talk to us a little bit about how you got started? Because we have viewers that you know they aspire to do a lot of really cool things, and IndyCar racing may be one of them. Absolutely, and I am a big proponent of you can do anything that you set your mind to, and I think I'm a good example of that. You know, it's kind of unusual that you, you want to be a race car driver when you're a nine-year-old girl <laughs> and you're racing go-karts and that's your dream. Um, but I think more than that, I think it should it should be a, a symbol just to follow whatever it is that you want to do in life and never give up and just, you know, grit your teeth and, and get on with it because anything is possible. Great advice mm -hmm. for life in general. Uh, so what do you love? I, it's obviously such a, a unique job it's a very cool job as mm -hmm. you mentioned but what what to you is something that you love most about doing what you do for a living oh i love all of it honestly i love i love driving i never came at it really from a love of cars mm. although i do love some cars it's more a love of competition ah. and speed and uh -huh. adrenaline and the fact that you can never you can never get out of the car and think okay that's as good as that car can go because mm. there's always something you can learn you can always get better um so it's competition with yourself as much as anything else competition with the others the speed 
um, the teamwork aspect, um, and you get to travel around the world driving fast cars, and it's just, it's, I mean, they're, don't get me wrong, you have to make sacrifices for sure. it, and you, I mean, you have to eat, sleep, breathe, everything racing, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, just like any sport, I imagine. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it's it's what I love to do, and it's what, the, it's the only thing I know. Right, and it's, it's your like, calling, right? Yeah. It's your calling. Right. And I will tell you, they have to be in tip-top yeah. shape, Yep. these racers, because don't they mold the car around you? They do, yeah. It's like you're in a coffin. It is unbelievable. That's, that's a that's a that's a visual. But they say it too. But you have to. It's not like you're just driving and you're you know going off and eating you know cheese doodles and and high C. So we applaud that you are also physically and mentally in shape. I wonder though, two things. One, have you ever gotten a speeding ticket? And two, how fast were you going? And three, what do you do when you're not racing cars? Okay, so one and two, if I told you, I'd probably get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Ooh, <buddy. laughs> no, I think I think um, you see driving on the road is very different to driving on the track. Like, there's no crossover, really. So I think it's easy to kind of compartmentalize and just realize that one is, one is totally different to the other. So I tend not to get driving tickets, but I also have a radar detector so just in case you know just just between us friends just in case just between us friends <laughs> love it um and then what do i do for fun i um i'm actually just normal i love to walk my dog oh. and i love to to kind of be private and hang out with my friends and and do all the things that everyday people do go shopping go to the cinema whatever it may be um I don't. I don't live life in the fast lane when I'm at home. Oh well my God! I, well love, I love that you just said that. Well that was fantastic. Done, Catherine. Love the tagline to wrap it all up. Catherine Leg, thank you so much for being here. Best of luck to you this weekend. We appreciate you thank joining you. us for a little bit. And um, actually, you should all watch 100 Days to Indy this evening because I think that that's the episode that I'm on. So you get to know a little bit more about Catherine. Love We're it. gonna do it. Must see we'll TV. Behind the curtain, that's if you will. Right. Thank, thank you so much.